This is the tech video for the all new Process X model. This is a brand new model for 2021. Uh, we started with a ground up frame design and took a lot of the elements that we've learned on our previous projects and applied them to this bike. Uh, it's an enduro race focused bike, but we knew when we built this bike, we still wanted to provide that really fun ride that Kona's known for. So there's a bunch of features that pair with that enduro race purpose that still make it a really great park bike, as well as heavy duty trail bike. So starting out, we've got a full carbon fiber front triangle, a full carbon fiber chain stay, and a full carbon fiber seat stay. Uh, the rocker is made out of aluminum and we did a lot of work to emphasize the weight savings there. And we also have a flip chip in the rocker and knew that we wanted to have aluminum as it's a more durable and robust material when you're moving parts around and we didn't want the rockers to be damaged, uh, which helped to influence our decision to use the aluminum rocker. We've got improved water bottle fit on all frame sizes. The bike is available in sizes small through extra large, and we'll get into those geometry dimensions in a little bit here. The cable routing on the frame very closely mimics what we've done with our Process 134 models, where there's a Y connector for the rear brake that allows it to be routed on either side of the head tube. Uh, it's a tube in tube construction, and we've also got tube in tube for the dropper post and for the rear derailleur. The rear derailleur is captured, uh, the rear derailleur cable is captured on the main pivot, which really minimizes the amount of rotation that the cable undergoes while the suspension is moving. What does that mean? Uh, it means no cable rub and it's a very tidy cable routing system. We've got a PF92 bottom bracket with flush mount ISCG 05 tabs. So uh, chain guides will be able to bolt directly on there with the uh, use of three small spacers. Uh, that would come in any chain guide kit. We have unique frame protection pieces. Uh, so the chain stay protection piece has raised bumps in the area most commonly struck by the chain during descending uh, to help keep the chain noise minimal. We've got a down tube protector that extends pretty far up the down tube from the BB shell area. And we've also got a down tube tailgate protector. So when you're moving the bike around and using a tailgate pad, uh, the paint won't be abraded on the down tube. We've also got a seat stay protector that just covers the inside from any sort of chain derailments, uh, chain slapping around on that seat stay area. We're using a 31.6 millimeter seat tube with really deep seat post insertion. The frame weight uh, is 2,700 grams in a size large for a fully painted frame that includes the rear derailleur hanger uh, and the seat collar installed on the frame. So 2,700 grams for size large, painted and ready to be assembled. So that covers some of the design features on the frame. Uh, the geometry we're gonna jump into now, uh, we've got a really slack head tube at 63 and a half degrees and that's paired with a 170 millimeter travel fork with 44 millimeters of offset. Uh, it's a reduced offset fork, so you get that increased trail number for better stability while descending. Uh, we've got a really steep 78 degree effective seat tube angle uh, that's going to put you in a body position much closer uh, and over the crank set. So for climbing steep roads where we anticipate a bike like this is going to be ridden, uh, you're going to have a really good body position for going up those roads. It's important to note that when we steepen the seat tube angle, we also increased the reach numbers to pair with that steeper seat tube angle. We've got reach numbers in the size small at 440, medium at 465, large at 490, and extra large at 525. Compared to our existing 134 and 153 models from years previous, that's effectively kind of the same top tube length uh, window. So that pedaling position and reach when you're seated is very similar to what you would have experienced on our existing bikes. And we controlled that um, and made sure that we were kind of ending up in that same area where the bike didn't feel too cramped when pedaling or too long uh, when pedaling. So it's a really consistent feel from what we've done previously. Uh, we've also got a reduced seat tube offset on this bike. So again, at, at higher ride heights, the seat tube angle is more consistent with that 78 degree effective seat tube angle. We've also shortened the seat tube length on all frame sizes. So our small and our medium use a 380 millimeter seat tube length. Uh, this seat tube length will accept a 170 uh, millimeter reverb to full insertion without the connectamajig. Our large is 420 millimeters and accepts a 200 millimeter without the connectamajig. And our extra large is at 450. 
uh, which accepts the again the 200 millimeter and even more if you find a longer travel dropper post without the connectamajig. Uh, it's important to note we took about 30 millimeters off each seat tube length in order to kind of provide that window for those longer travel droppers. The size small and the medium share the same seat tube length because we kind of run into a window where the tire and the seat and the rider are all existing in conflict in that uh, you put the seat all the way down and all those pieces are kind of coming together. So between the small and the medium, riders are really just picking a reach number that they prefer. And as you go up, uh, the seat tubes do get longer on the bigger two sizes, the large and the XL. We've got a flip chip on the seat stay and rocker. So on that seat stay and rocker member, there's a flip chip that will allow you to run a 27 five inch rear wheel. This is really important for our small and medium riders, especially, and anyone who wants a more lively, uh, snappy ride feel out of the bike. Again, talking about that Kona ride feel that we sort of uh, want to build something that's fun, but we also want something that's really uh, compatible for a lot of different riders. So when you change that to the 27.5 or 29 inch setting, uh, the BB height is preserved with the respective rear wheels. So with the 27.5 uh, wheel, you end up with the same BB height as with the 29 inch wheel and 29 inch setting. It's important to note the size small ships with the 27.5 rear wheel, the medium through extra large will come with the 29 inch rear wheel. We've also got a flip chip on the rear axle, which provides 15 millimeters of wheelbase adjustment. So in the short setting, it's 435 millimeters. And in the long setting, we're at 450 millimeters. The long setting requires a Kona specific brake adapter, which is inclu included with the bike in the small parts box. And that's only compatible with the 200 millimeter rear rotor. So if you're in that long setting, you'll need to use a 200 mil rotor or use another adapter to go to a 220. The Process X has a revised leverage curve compared to our existing uh, 153 and 134 models. Uh, we're using a 205 by 625 trunnion shock with a 20 by 8 millimeter lower hardware. So a nice feature of that is if you need to change any volume spacers, the air can can be removed from the body of the air shock without having to push out the hardware. You can just slide it right off, change anything, pull, do a lower can service and put it back on. Uh, in the short setting, the bike has 158 millimeters of travel. In the long setting, it has 164. So that's for the chainstay length number. Uh, we round that to 161 in our marketing materials as it's in between those two dimensions. Um, but because you're changing the length of the swing arm, you end up with slightly more travel in the long setting and slightly less in the short setting. We worked really hard to improve the small bump sensitivity on this bike and came to a progressive leverage rate throughout the travel. So that means that there's a pretty straight line. Uh, it's 13% progression from 30 to 95% travel. And that zero to 30% is also on that same 13% slope. What that gives is a better small bump compliance off the top and allows for more linear spring rates. Uh, so less volume spacers, coil shocks um, are all gonna play really well with this bike. We've also adjusted the anti-squat curve to work on decoupling the chain forces from the rear suspension uh, while descending. So in your climbing gears, you're around 85% anti-squat. And when you go into the, the lower gears, the harder gears on your bike, that anti-squat number drops off farther. So this kind of limits the amount of chain force on the suspension and gives a more supple ride feel. This bike is designed specifically with the climb switch in mind. So we would encourage if you build up a frame only that you do purchase a shock with a climb switch. The bike has tons and tons of traction while climbing technical single track in the open position, but long fire road climbs, things like that, uh, the climb switch is gonna be your friend and it does a lot to really support you while climbing a, a long sustained grade on a fire road. But again, on that technical single track, uh, there's gobs and gobs of traction in the rear suspension in the open position.